Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and we got news, specifically news about the upcoming book, Shadow of the Sith. Now, this has been my most anticipated book because I love Luke Skywalker. I love that we're getting some some um, new Republic era content. Uh, I love that we're getting Lando content, and Ochi Abestun has started to become one of my favorite characters. I don't know if you're reading Vader 2020. If you aren't, like, please do, because it is excellent as well as crimson rain don't sleep on crimson rain but the news came with a reveal of a new character mind you not a super new character as we do see them on the cover of the book but let's take a look one of the interesting things that they said is that if you've been reading all of the canon books all along then you will know who this person is and that has led a lot of people to ask well who is it i am 99 percent positive that this is Kiza, and we were first introduced to this character in the Aftermath book series. Now, personally, I have a love-hate relationship with the Aftermath book series. It gave me Mr. Bones, one of the greatest droids of all time, and Sinjir Rathvelis came out of nowhere to become just an awesome character. Plus, I mean, who doesn't love more Wedge content? But the way the first book was written was kind of hard for me to read. It was broken up into a lot of these vignettes. However, these vignettes have been giving us some really solid nuggets. That's what's introduced us to Cobb Vanth, and that's where we are getting this new character, Kiza, from. In the first book of the series, we get introduced to a character by the name of Yup Tashu. Um, he leads a group called the Acolytes of Beyond. They worship the Sith. That's really all you need to know about him. He doesn't relate to this character a whole ton. In subsequent books, we actually get more information on them. Now, Kiza is a Pantoran female, which was kind of a dead giveaway when you look at the hand and the arm. It's very feminine and very clearly looks like a, like a woman's hand. It's also blue, so that kind of limits the species it could be. Also, we have the lightsaber and the mask. Now, in the story, we actually find uh, out about Kind of her and her boyfriend are part of the Acolytes of Beyond. Uh, we get one of the missions where they're fighting against the New Republic. Um, they're taking these Sith artifacts and using them. Now, Yup Tashu, the leader of them, actually hands her this mask. And when he does, he also takes a lightsaber away from the person that was her boyfriend and gives it to her. What happens next? Well, the boyfriend tries to take the lightsaber back and she just kills him right then and there on the spot. This seems like the mask is taking over. We don't quite know what extent it is. If it's the same as like Darth Momin taking over where he literally inhabits you or if it's to a lesser extent and she's still in control of her own actions. But we do know that she's force sensitive um, and kind of a badass. I'm really excited to see it. That story happens in 5 ABY, so in the scheme of like the timeline, this does match up pretty well also. Along with this, we also got an excerpt from it. I will read that at the end. So if all you wanted to know was who the person was, it's a Pantoran female named Kiza who's a member of the Acolytes of Beyond. If that's all you wanted to know, you can jump off here, but please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, um, do all the things. I really do appreciate it. And now I will read to you the excerpt. Let's go. The Spelcher coordinates, unknown. Now, something moves in the darkness. A shadow casts long, crawling through the abyssal night. The shadow is a thing apart, neither alive nor dead. It is a relic. It is an echo, a presence from an older time, a malignancy that somehow survived, somehow found a way, found a path. She can see it now, black and blacker still, moving, always moving, an intelligent, yes, a mind but one without form or substance, but here, present nonetheless. She closes her eyes. It makes no difference. There is nothing to see but a gulf, a nothing where the shadow lives, where the shadow thrives. In the darkness, in the forever night inside her head. And the void is not silent. It is anything but. It is a cacophony, a sound so loud it lights up every nerve fiber of her entire being, even though she knows there is nothing to hear physically. It is the sound of pain, the sound of death, the sound 
of a thousand, thousand, thousand souls crying out in sorrow and agony before they're snuffed out in an instant. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, podlings, branchlings, kithkin, spore childs, and den mothers, space fathers and their brethren, and their gene clusters and their shoots spawn and offspring, children, entire generations of the living consumed, their dying cries absorbed, left to reflect forever, trapped inside a dark vessel crafted centuries ago by a power uncommon, inhuman, by a darkness, by a shadow cast long. And there's another sound, a voice from the ancient past. It is a far distant. And there's another sound, a voice from the ancient past. It is far distant. A call echoing across a huge valley of space and time. The voice is terrible. The voice is as familiar as her own. Soon. She opens her golden eyes. The room is bright and mercifully silent. Her ears ring like a bell. The sudden absence of screams almost as painful. The echo of the voice still reverberating in her mind. Slowly, slowly, she remembers where she is as she lies on the floor and blinks the world into existence around her. She pulls up a hand and touches her face. It is warm and wet, the blood on her fingertips, the bright blue of the Pantoran sky. The place is lit by flickering flame and the flickering flame lights the plinth of meteoric iron and beside the plinth lies the mask made of the same star stuff. The mask faces away from her. It rocks gently like it has just been thrown. She stares at the back of it, the curve of nothing, of darkness, of deep shadow. And she hears the voice again. Soon. Soon. She closes her eyes and she sleeps exchanging one nightmare for another. In the dead of night, in the dead of space, she wakes to another sound, one of technological, modern. She lifts herself from her nest, ignoring the throbbing in her head, the ache of her limbs, because she can't keep them waiting. They are patient, yes, infuriatingly so, but they're also quick to anger. And if there is one thing she dares not to do, it is make them angry. She agreed to help them. They agreed to show her the way. This is how it was. And she would do nothing to jeopardize that. Standing, she activates the commutator. <clears throat> Standing, she activates the communicator and her nest is lit in the sudden electric blue of a hologram. The image shimmers and pulses, tinged with the same static interference that protects the caller's point of origin. She kneels before the figure, cloaked in darkness, the hood barely concealing a face that is wrapped tightly in heavy black bandages, in the manner of all cultists of the Sith Eternal hide their faces. She doesn't know why, she doesn't care, but she does obey. What is thy bidding, my master? She intones, repeating the litany that echoed through time like the screams inside the mask she knew she would have to put on again soon. The looming figure speaks and she listens and she wonders whether this will be the last time or whether they will ever honor their promise. Perhaps one day they will ask too much. Woof. I don't know about you guys, but I got chills reading that. I I mean, I feel like this is pretty obviously um, that character. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited for this book. I got goosebumps like uh, it's it's such a, a chilling kind of has this ephemeral feel of a story. So I'm really excited to jump into it. I think this is very obviously uh, Kiza and that is the the mask of the Viceroy XM Panshard uh, that she's wearing that has 
all of this darkness and deaths and screaming attached to it, I think we're going to find out a lot of really cool force lore in this book. So yeah, if you're excited for it, please let me know in the comments, uh, in the, in the comments, what you want to see, like share, subscribe, um, do all the things. I really appreciate it. It does help the channel. Uh, this book will be coming out on June 28th. I will also leave a link in, in the subscription. If you do want to pre-order or pick it up. Um, yeah, always happy to make these videos and talk Star Wars with y'all. May the force be with you.